and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. One of the things you may be thinking about on your farm is how am I going to stop the weeds in corn? Because if I'm rotating to a crop like soybeans or weed control is difficult, I have to do an awesome job in the corn this year. So we'll talk about your best options for post-emerge control of weeds in corn. We also want to get into weed control in non-crop areas, whether it's ditches or fence lines or just around your farmyard or around your house. We're going to talk about your best options there. That's good, Brian, because you never know where you might find our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this weed later in the show, but first, here's our Farm Basics. The corn we planted early February we have all good emergence. So far, we can't find any condition that the wheels haven't worked. I can just say that. Closing the seed trench behind the planter is essential to establishing yields in the fall. Introducing the Germinator Closing Wheel from Farm Shop MFG. Designed and built by a farmer who is tired of seeing poor stands because of uneven emergence, the Germinator is here to give your crop the strong start it needs for maximum yield. For more information, visit us at farmshopmfg.com. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about the difference between mobile and immobile nutrients within a plant. When farmers look at the crops they're going to raise, one of the biggest considerations is how many nutrients the crop is going to need and when it's going to need those nutrients. Now, you may notice that farmers oftentimes will put fertilizer out ahead of a crop, but if you don't have the right nutrients in place during that season for a crop, you could have some trouble. And this is where the mobile versus immobile discussion comes into play. Well, quite frankly, I don't care when you put the fertilizer on. It's just the plant has to always have enough fertility every single day in its life. Otherwise, you're going to start to, if things get bad enough, see a visual issue with the plant. The plant may start to turn a different color. That's a real problem. With nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, they are what's called mobile within the plant. So when new growth comes, if the plant feels, hey, it, I'm short on nutrients, for nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium, it will actually rob those nutrients from the lower part of the plant, which means the lower part of the plant will turn a different color. With nitrogen and potassium, that color would be yellow. With phosphorus, that color would be purple. Well, you definitely don't want to see your crop turning any colors, and with those mobile nutrients, they do move around in the plant. The immobile nutrients, though, you're going to see deficiency signs show up on the top portion or the newest growth on that plant. And with those nutrients, that's why I mentioned you may need to be doing some nutrient applications in season, depending on what kind of soils you have and if they can hold and keep available lots and lots of nutrients. If you can't, like say you're farming in real sandy soil that doesn't have a whole lot of nutrient holding capacity, you're going to need to be applying these nutrients throughout the season and spoon feeding them, meaning putting small amounts of fertilizer out every couple of weeks maybe to keep feeding that plant throughout the season. Okay, so once again, I don't care if it's a mobile or immobile nutrient. Either way, the plant has to have enough of every single nutrient every single day. So like Darren was saying, with the immobile nutrients, basically all that happens is if the plant runs short, it can't rob it from anywhere else in the plant, and you're gonna see the upper leaves turn a different color. So for example, sulfur or zinc, and many of these micronutrients, upper leaves turning a different color means that you're short on one of those. The lower leaves turning a different color means that you're short on one of the mobile nutrients. So that's just the real simple difference. So when you're out scouting a field, scouting any crop, anything in your garden even, if you're seeing deficiencies on the lower leaves, you know it's a mobile nutrient. It's probably N, P, or K. If it's the upper leaves, it's most likely an immobile nutrient, sulfur, one of the micros. And my last comment, we don't want to mislead you thinking that every time you're short of any nutrient in any amount, you're going to see it show up visually on the plant. You might not see these deficiency symptoms until your plant is really short. So the way that you can tell whether it's a garden plant or a crop, you can take leaf analysis. So you can take a few leaves out of the field, send it into the lab, and they can determine what the nutrient content is and if that's up to snuff or if you're running short on some of those nutrients. It's tremendously important that you keep your plants well fed to get top yields and also to minimize the amount of weeds that end up out in the fields, like our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop this tough weed later in the show. 
Success isn't just about maintaining your operation, how you make out for the season, or how much you can get from each acre. It's about doing precisely what needs to be done to feed your crop and grow your legacy. All the way down to the last drop. Agroliquid Precision Crop Nutrition. Apply less, expect more. Find a retailer at agroliquid.com. Avoid dry run failures with the new High Pro Force Field Pump, providing the ultimate protection. This wet seal pump will save you on costly in season downtime to keep your sprayer running. Now all you have to worry about is the weather. High Pro, helping you spray better. Find love and then give it all away. More choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. And use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBayerPlus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. It's no secret that Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate with your schedule. Field conditions in recent years kept many from timely planting and fertilizing. And when you can't get your fertilizer applied, you lose thousands of dollars in yield potential. If you need flexibility in your fertility application timing, you need a drop tube system from CNR Supply. CNR drop tubes allow you to apply liquid nitrogen in season and place it exactly where your crop needs it. To learn more about low cost CNR drop tube solutions, visit crsupply.com. There are a lot of options today when it comes to post-emerge corn herbicides. We're going to go through those both in terms of broadleaf control and grass control. Let's start with the grass control because it's a little shorter discussion. If you have Roundup Ready corn or Liberty Link corn or corn that's tolerant to both Roundup and Liberty, well those are great options and you're really not going to have to be too choosy about what grasses you're going after because both of those products will do a pretty good job on all grasses. Now with Roundup, you can get by with a little bit lower rate than really small grasses. And just on the perennial grasses, you'll need a really strong rate of Roundup, probably up to the maximum labeled rate. With Liberty, it's a little bit different. It's not quite as good a product as Roundup on grasses. So on things like foxtails, you're gonna need a full quart of Liberty out there to do a pretty good job. The best grass weed, surprisingly, that Liberty has control on is woolly cup grass. We used to get good control on woolly cup grass, even with a slightly lower rate of Liberty. So for weed control with Liberty and Roundup, you've got great options. Conventional corn though, you've just got one choice and that's Accent Q. You've got to get those grasses when they're an inch tall or less. And to get Accent Q to work the best, you'll also need to have some oil with that, typically a crop oil or methylated seed oil. And also you're going to need a good amount of nitrogen, I prefer one gallon per acre of liquid spray grade 28% nitrogen, but you'll see recommendations vary on that in different parts of the country. Now, Darren said we're gonna start with grasses, and when he talked about Roundup, Liberty, Accent Q, you might have thought, well, wait a second, how about all those group 15s, Harness, Surpass, Outlook, Dual, Zidual? Those don't have contact activity. Those only have residual control. What we wanted to focus on today was if you've already got grasses up, how are you going to burn those down? Now we do occasionally get some people that will tell us, well, the HPPDs are really good at burning down grasses. No, they're not. I don't care if we're talking Laudis, Impact, Callisto, Armazai, it doesn't matter. They're not very good. Yes, it's possible to control some grass, but let's keep in mind, we could go back to the old days when we used to spray a lot of dicamba. Guys were using a pint of Banvel or Clarity, that actually would control some grasses as well, especially if you throw a little bit of atrazine in there. So what we're talking about with grass control is if you've got quite a few grasses out there and they have escaped and they are now bigger than a quarter inch or a half an inch tall, that's where it's basically Roundup, Liberty, or Accent Q. 
All right, let's switch gears here and talk about broadleaf weed control. Brian mentioned the HPPD family, the Callisto, Laudis, Impact, Armazon products, or the many, many combination products that contain one or more of those HPPD products. They're really nice broadleaf control products. I like them a lot for the large seeded broadleaves, things like cockleburr and sunflower. I like them for velvet leaf control. And they also do have a little bit of residual activity to pick up some of the late emergers, which I like as well. They're also pretty safe to the crop, which is a pretty good thing. You want to spray them within their labeled timings, of course, but they're less harsh on the crop than some of the older chemistries that are out there on the market. Where I see a weakness on these HPPDs is they just aren't very good on the viney type weeds. So things like field bindweed, not a big fan of the HPPDs on them. Also, I'll say with the HPPDs, we do see a little more activity with them when you can take mix some atrazine in, even a quarter pound to a half a pound per acre really improves their control. In terms of weaknesses with the HPPDs, Darren mentioned viney species like field bindweed, wild buckwheat, but the things that I focus on with the HPPDs in terms of weakness are number one, we worry a little about carryover, so be concerned about what you're rotating to, and number two, weed resistance. We have seen a little bit of weed resistance pop up with the HPPDs, so we really encourage you, please use multiple modes of action. Now, the other main product that we talk about, other than the HPPDs, for post-emerge broadleaf control in corn is Status. Status is fantastic. It's a combination of diflufenzapyr and a little bit of dicamba. And what I always tell people is with Status, hey, if you've got every weed under the sun and it's a mess out in your field, Status is the product you want. It is by far the best. It is absolutely better than the HPPDs. But the problem is it costs about five times the amount of money. One last thing I'd mentioned, Brian, you said the two main ones here were the HPPDs and Status. And I'll agree with you, but we still have a lot of farmers out there spraying Roundup in this post-emerge application. Maybe it's for grass control, but we're still getting quite a bit of broadleaf control out of that, but not everything. There are enough Roundup resistant weeds out there that most commonly we're seeing Roundup tank mixed with something else, like one of the HPPDs, for example. That's fine but be careful what rate you're using of each of those two. Now with the Roundup, you may be going out there with a quart and that's fine. With the HPPD or whatever component you're adding to it, a dicamba or something, you wanna make sure you're running at the full labeled rate or very close to it. Because think about it this way, if there are Roundup resistant weeds like pigweed out there, your Roundup is doing nothing on them. So you're relying on that other tank mix partner, you better be at a strong rate. The last thing that I wanted to mention here is something that really came out of 2019 a bunch again, where people weren't able to spray timely because of rainfall. And so we had lots of questions about brown silk applications. Yes, you can go in super late and spray some 2,4-D with drop nozzles or something like that if you want to, but man, I hate that stuff. We've never done that on our farm nor will we. I would just assume we spend no more money at that point. The key for corn yield is you have to keep that field weed free from the time the corn emerges until the time the corn is a foot tall, maybe foot and a half. If you simply do that, you will maximize yield. Now, yes, if some weeds come late, you're gonna have an issue moving forward. You're gonna have a lot of weeds you gotta kill at that point, but I would just say try to get the spraying done relatively early. Let's get some residual herbicides out there. That's usually where we maximize yield by having that good weed control early. Well, if you have our Weed of the Week in your fields, you'll definitely be spraying early to get this under control. Can you identify our Weed of the Week? If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Harvest, you have one goal, providing the perfect flow of grain from the field to the bend. Case IH Axial Flow Combines are engineered for matched capacity to deliver proven grain savings so you can keep efficiency flowing smoothly. Find yours with the Case IH Axial Flow.
Where we have run the soil warrior, we have harvested the best corn we have ever harvested in the history of Renwood Farms. Now, I'm kind of always wanting to push the envelope to see what else I can do to help enhance that emergence. Their ride is so much smoother. Their seed placement is even better. Where we had our best emergence and we've had our best yields was where we ran the soil warrior. Introducing the all-new Diamant Cornhead from Capello USA. With a revolutionary design highly innovative for its class, we have painstakingly designed every component down to the smallest detail to maximize your harvest efficiency. This gives you unprecedented standards in operation and performance. For more information about this beast, available only in our new Gray Poly, call 855-CAPELLO or visit capellousa.com to find a dealer near you. Capello, wherever you are, we are. Challenging field conditions often make harvest difficult. Can your corn head handle it? The GTS X10 corn head from Agra US is a rugged, cost-effective alternative to heavier, more traditional heads. Constructed of durable yet lightweight aluminum, the X10 puts less strain on your combine without losing harvest effectiveness. And it is 40% lighter than traditional heads, reducing field compaction in those less than ideal conditions. For more information, give us a call at 8334-AGRA US. to talk about weed control out in corn fields and soybean fields and wheat fields, but we get a lot of questions about weed control in other areas. So today we're gonna to talk about some of those other places where you may see weeds pop up and give you some ideas for control. All right, Brian, if you have weeds in a ditch, for example, a roadside ditch, what are some of the best methods for getting that under control? Well, the best method, because I don't wanna go out and pull those weeds, is I'm gonna spray a herbicide. In terms of what herbicide I'm going to use, it depends on what is in the field right next to it. If it is a crop that is tolerant to 2,4-D, that's what I'm going to use is 2,4-D. If it's a crop that's tolerant to dicamba, I might just use dicamba. So it does depend a lot on what's in the field. All right, now the other method that we'd hear a lot of talk about is just mowing. Can I just keep mowing the ditch and stay ahead of the weeds? Absolutely, you can, but the problem is some of these weeds grow really fast. You gotta keep in mind that a weed's only goal in life is to reproduce. So if you start cutting every month, let's call it, then a lot of the plants are gonna figure out, well, how can I put seeds on and actually go to seed in three and a half weeks? You just have to keep cutting earlier and earlier, it seems like. So as long as you are able to cut constantly, and as long as we're just talking about annual weeds, that method works great. In the ditches, Brian, you focus mostly on broadleaf control. In lawns and around the farmyard, though, we do see some grasses that can be a problem in addition to broadleafs. Yep, but the problem is with most grasses, you're not gonna have good control with a herbicide. So let's say it's quack grass in your lawn. Well, then you're probably just gonna have to eliminate the entire lawn, spray a very high rate of Roundup and get control that way. Broadleaves, much easier. You can use some 2,4-D. We really liked the new Freelex. That's the 2,4-D that basically doesn't drift or volatilize. If you can find some of that, great. Otherwise, there is Vastlan, and what that is is Remedy Ultra and that new 2,4-D Freelex. The Remedy Ultra has good activity on brush species, and it doesn't have residual. With the 2,4-D, just like old 2,4-D, it's got a little bit of residual, not a tremendous amount, though. So a lot of times what we'll talk about is spraying real early in the spring, spraying late in the fall. If you have regular 2,4-D, so we don't have all that volatility dropping leaves off trees, killing flowers, and all those kind of issues. Otherwise, like I say, if you can find some of the new Freelex, the 2,4-D that doesn't drift, now you're in good shape. We see a lot of different strategies used for weed control and fence lines. Certainly mowing and using a, a weed eater or a trimmer yep, underneath the fence line prefer. can be done. And that it takes a little bit of time, but then you can have some grass growth underneath there, which helps choke out weeds. Otherwise, we do see people that are using Roundup and other things to just kill everything under the fence line so or, they don't have to trim. But or Pramitol or Hivar that basically is a ground sterilant. I don't like those because you can get some leaching out there. You have more erosion. So if it's me, I'm still just basically going to trim under there, but you certainly could use a ground sterilant. The other thing to come back to what you mentioned earlier, Darren, on the grass control, there certainly are some products out there that can be used to control grass grass, in grass, just look at the label and your particular use, but there are things like Pastora, Plateau, and Dimension. 
Well, weed control is important no matter where it's at, especially if you have things like our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Our weed of the week is mare's tail. Mare's tail is a winter annual weed and for conventional till farmers, they don't see very much mare's tail out in fields. However, when you go to no-till or strip-till like the field that we're in today, those types of weeds start becoming much more prevalent and it takes a whole different strategy to get them under control. Yeah, so you absolutely can go out there and do tillage if you want to stop mare's tail. We don't have any big issue with that, but it better be pretty aggressive tillage if it's in the spring, not in the fall. By the time it gets to spring, usually mare's tail can be big. I know we've tried to till it out ourselves, hasn't worked super well. The best method of control for mare's tail is actually herbicide in the fall. And I realize that may be a lot different than what you normally do on your farm, but I'll just tell you in our own experience where we really stopped mare's tail pretty much once and for all in several of our fields is we went out with a full quart to Banville in the fall and we literally stopped our combines for a couple of afternoons, sprayed in the afternoons when the temperature is around 70 degrees in the fall, and we wiped out all our mare's tail. And by the way, we wiped out our dandelions at the same time. That's the best thing you can do. So I would spray dicamba if I'm gonna plant corn the following year. I would spray 2,4-D in the fall if I'm gonna plant soybeans the following year because the 2,4-D doesn't have as much residual. And you could certainly put a residual product with that. We oftentimes see Valor getting used in the fall in front of a soybean rotation for next spring. That would be a good yep. way to go. You can yep. add that in. It also adds a little bit of burn to help control some of those bigger mare's tail. Okay, so let's say you get to spring. If you're going to burn down in front of wheat or in front of corn, Sharpen is our first choice in terms of mare's tail control and a burn down. We don't like it in front of soybeans though because you can only use a one ounce rate of Sharpen. So our advice instead is use the three pre's. That'd be Prowl, Metribuzin, together with either Valor or Authority. And then if you want to, throw in some Gramoxone, you could throw in some Liberty, you could throw in Dicamba in front of Dicamba beans, 2,4-D in front of 2,4-D beans. You've got a number of options there, but Roundup unfortunately is not very good anymore in Mare's Tail. When it comes to post-emerge control, I like status at a strong rate in corn. I'd like to spike in some atrazine if possible too. In soybeans, I really like the Enlist soybeans where you could do a combination of Liberty and Enlist 1 or the new soon to be labeled Extend Flex soybeans where hopefully you'll be able to do the same thing Liberty in combination with Dicamba. Yeah, even if you just have straight Liberty, straight Liberty is not too bad if it's a Liberty tolerant crop. Then we get to wheat. Usually we don't have a big issue post-emerge with mare's tail in wheat, but if it was me, I would try to burn it down with husky and maybe even, unfortunately, you're gonna have to probably spike in a little bit of 2,4-D or some MCP. That's all the time we have for this week's Weed of the Week, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Success isn't just about maintaining your operation, how you make out for the season or how much you can get from each acre. It's about doing precisely what needs to be done to feed your crop and grow your legacy. All the way down to the last drop. Agroliquid Precision Crop Nutrition. Apply less, expect more. Find a retailer at agroliquid.com. More choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. And use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBayerPlus.com to sign in and start earning. 
That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. How much does your crop residue cost you? Over time, residue accumulates in your fields, building excess carbon levels and tying up your plant available nitrogen. Residue also traps P, K, and micros and can take years to naturally become available to your crops. This is because soil lacks the diverse microbial life needed to break it all down. With Decomp, you can naturally restore life to your soil and allow the release of valuable crop fertility. Learn more about Decomp at eggbio.solutions. Challenging field conditions often make harvest difficult. Can your corn head handle it? The GTS X10 corn head from Agra US is a rugged, cost-effective alternative to heavier, more traditional heads. Constructed of durable yet lightweight aluminum, the X10 puts less strain on your combine without losing harvest effectiveness. And it is 40% lighter than traditional heads, reducing field compaction in those less than ideal conditions. For more information, give us a call at 8334-AGRA US. Do you feel like there's never enough time to get everything done before planting? The window for spring work is quick and unforgiving. Give yourself the upper hand with the ProTail High Performance High Speed Disc. More and more farmers agree the ProTail is the right tool for spring field conditions and heavy residue management. Zero maintenance bearings, independent disc technology, oversized pins and bushings allow the ProTail to handle whatever field or conditions you can throw at it. Degelman High Performance Equipment. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. At Harvest, you have one goal, finding the perfect flow of grain from the field to the bend. Case IH Axial Flow Combines are engineered for matched capacity to deliver proven grain savings so you can keep efficiency flowing smoothly. Find yours with the Case IH Axial Flow. We get a lot of questions each year about spray drift. It's the topic of today's Iron Talk. Wind is always a big consideration on the farm, but other than not spraying on windy days, there are several things you can do to get a handle on it. Almost every day has some degree of wind, and even if it's only three or five miles per hour, it still needs to be managed. First of all, your spray nozzles make a huge difference. It's a balancing act between coverage and drift control though. My personal favorite tip for getting coverage is the Hypro 3D nozzle. It works awesome for insecticides, fungicides, and contact herbicides. However, smaller droplets can blow away easier, so you may have to lean more towards a nozzle that makes a coarser and larger droplet, especially with some of the crop protection products. The height of your spray boom above a crop also makes a big difference, and honestly, it's one of those details that gets missed the most. If your boom is three or four feet above the crop, you're much more prone to drift. The best recommendation I can give you, depending on your tips and spacing, is to have the boom 20 inches above the crop. You still get your full spray pattern, and you're less exposed to wind. Work with your equipment provider to change nozzles or change the spacing of the nozzles on your boom to allow you to lower that boom down closer to the crop canopy. Faster operating speeds can be and frequently are an issue with drift as well. You want to cover a lot of acres, but running faster leads to more drift. The guideline is to never run above 15 miles per hour, and if you could go slower than that, it would be much better. Upgrade your nurse trailer. That'll keep you moving faster in your spray operations, and it's the best way to speed things up without giving up coverage or causing drift. Finally, maintain a safe buffer around sensitive crops. With some products like the newer dicamba herbicides, for example, it's right on the label. Play it extra safe on the field borders with wind, spray tips, boom height, and sprayer operation speed. Follow these tips, and spray drift can be managed properly on your farm. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but if you're looking for more agronomic information, we'd encourage you to check out the Ag PhD radio show. You'll find us each weekday on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central. Don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.